What it do, E World? Crisscross and wise with time it is out here. 1021. Yeah, that's how we do it. Uh, I'm a vampire when it comes to working on these bikes and whatever. So, I, on the late night tip for real, for real. Just finished my little salad. Uh, weather's not too bad today. Oh, man, we got some. Oh, we got some good stuff about to go down up in yeah, up in yeah. Make no mistake about it. But anyway, uh, just uh, hollering at E World. Hope everybody's doing well. Who else is uh, working hard this time of night or out in their shop doing what they do? So yeah, we in the lab. Uh, we throwing together a few more. Uh, uh, a few more P to throw on this thing, man. Uh, like I said, just need some P for right now. Just need a little bit more amps for what we're doing right now. This is definitely not the battery that I'm going to be making for this thing as we doing that with P45s. These are P42s. However, for the moment, we still got... Uh, we still got some room up in there, and we had some cells laying around that uh, wasn't doing nothing at the moment. So uh, I figured I'd go ahead and throw them together. Uh, and, uh, yeah, like I said, add a little bit more capacity to what we got going on. So when we throw this monster motor on there, uh, we can go ahead and uh, dial some amps up and... Uh, at least uh, get busy while we working on our big pack and our high voltage system. Make no mistake about it, I am going crazy high voltage. It's not a game. Uh, I was able to see just how spectacular just going to 96 volts is. Oh man, the... Uh, increased rpm that i noticed going from well i mean that's a obvious and a given but uh you know when you when you actually see it firsthand uh like i said i'm pretty sure uh going from 72 to 96 especially uh when you're above 600 phase amps I mean, obviously, you want to be a little more than that, but yeah, minimum. Uh, I'm pretty sure that equates to about 20, 25 more mile per hour over 72 volts, if not a little more than that. But I'm going to say 20, 25 just to be on the safe side uh, as far as... Um, I'm pretty sure that's guaranteed what you can get uh, with the right amount of amps. Now, like I said, you ain't going to go from 72 volts to 96 volts on 150 amps and expect any amazing changes. But when you got uh, at least an 80 amp hour pack, big old pack, and, um, you know, you got 600 plus DC line amps, and uh, you you got the juice. Now, another thing I wanted to say, uh, I said it in another video because uh, that battery compartment is so large that I try to make people understand that because you can go so big with the battery as far as the P, meaning how many cells are in parallel, you don't necessarily have to have a super high output cell you know like these p42s they're 45 amp cells now uh when your battery compartment is limited you know as far as how many cells you can put in there obviously you want the most dense cell possible as, as far as capacity and discharge rate because you don't have a lot of room you need the best performance you can get from that limited space all right so obviously you're going to go with the highest discharge rate cell and the highest capacity cell but when you got 
tons of room like what's in that thing. You don't necessarily need P45s because you can build a pack where a normal, uh, and, and this is what's considered big, let's say like a, uh, at one time, and it, and actually, there's small packs now uh, on Emotos. 40 amp hour. 40 amp hour at one time was considered a big pack, all right? Now, with Mylo cells, a 40 amp hour is about a 10P. They're 4,200 milliamp. So, at 10P, that's uh, 42,000 milliamp hours or 42 amp hour, okay? So, yeah. That's really not a huge pack now, but when it comes to Mylo cells, uh, like I said, 42 amp hour, but 10p at 45 amps each is about 450 amps discharge. Now, if you can build a pack that is 25p, okay? A 25P pack, 25 cells in parallel, they don't have to be 45 amps at that point. If you get a decent 20 amp cell, uh, even 20P, 20 amps uh, is 400 amps. So at that 25P, you'll still get the same amount of discharge, uh, around 450 amps in there. So, you know, you don't need as good a performance cell when you're putting that many cells in parallel. Also, uh, all that being said, it's clearly understandable that you should realize that when you're increasing capacity by putting more cells in parallel, as capacity increases, so does the discharge rate, okay? Uh, they go hand in hand, all right? 10P, uh, 42 amp hour, and 450 amps. 20P is 84 amp hour, and uh, 900 amps. So, as the amount of P, you know, you got to keep that in mind. As your P increases, your discharge rate increases. So let's just say like uh, if you had regular packs, like an MB power pack, if you got a 72 volt, uh, 40 amp hour MB power pack, and let's say that MB power pack can discharge 150 amps because they most of them come with 150 amp BMS. So well, let's keep it simple, 150 amps. Um, if you were able to add one more MB power pack, the same size as that one, in parallel, that's going to double your capacity from 40 amp hour to 80 amp hour. It's also going to double your discharge rate. So your discharge rate is going to go from 150 to 300, okay? So when you're increasing the capacity, uh, that discharge rate is increasing. Now, if you had voltage sag on that 40 amp hour, when you put another 40 amp hour in parallel, uh, it's you're probably not going to have voltage sag. You know what I mean? So, what was that? Stand by. I don't know what the hell that was. But anyway, uh, like I was saying, Whenever you increase capacity, you're increasing your discharge. And you can do that by adding more packs in parallel, you know. Um, another thing I want to tell people, that you can add multiple packs in parallel. They don't have to be identical as far as the cells. You can have two totally different packs as long as they're the same voltage their capacity and their discharge rate can be totally different you know when you put them in parallel the capacity and discharge rate is just going to add up it's as simple as that uh 
because you have a 10 amp hour and a 50 amp hour in parallel that 10 amp hour is not going to produce any more amps than it would normally produce it's just going to add those amps to whatever that 50 amp hour is discharging so if that 50 amp hour is discharging 300 amps and that 10 amp hour is discharging 75 amps you're going to have 375 amps of discharge and at 60 amp hour it just adds up it's simple math and uh, you know once again the bigger your battery gets the more discharge so if you're trying to combat voltage sag uh, adding more packs is going to help with that. If uh, the problem is not enough discharge as far as the cells. Now, you can also have voltage sag coming from other things such as, you know, small gauge wire, wrong improper size connectors. But if all that's correct, uh, based, you know, based on just the cells themselves, yeah. Uh, I get the rambling on and on about certain shit. Uh, let me see. I just wanted to say, uh, uh, let me see. What was I doing out here? Yeah, I don't know. Just wanted to show y'all a little something, man. That thing sound good. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Just a little uh, quick video on uh, discharge capacity and uh, how that adds up. And remember this, whenever you put packs in parallel, make sure they are the same voltage when you're putting them in parallel. I don't mean just the fact that obviously you can only put, if it's a 72 volt pack, you can only put another 72 volt pack in parallel with that pack. Even if they're both 72 volt packs, I mean when you actually go to make that physical connection, both of those packs have to be sitting at the same voltage. You can't have one 72 volt pack fully charged and the other 72 volt pack half dead okay one's uh at 84 volts and the other one is at 74 volts as soon as you connect them together that 84 volt pack is going to be trying to charge that other pack at an extreme high amount of current is going to be a huge current rush from that one pack into that other pack. That is not going to be good. So don't do that. Make sure they are at the same voltage. The easiest way to make sure that they're at the same voltage. Just fully charge both of them. That's it. If they're both fully charged. They'll both be sitting at 84 volts. And then you connect them. Put them in parallel. Parallel means the positives are connected together. And the negatives are connected together. Easy peasy. Uh. Also, people don't know when you put two packs in parallel, when you go to charge, once you put them in parallel, that is acting as one pack, okay? You don't have to charge each pack at that point. You can charge one pack and that will, that will charge both of them. They're connected. They're in parallel. So as one, as the voltage comes up on one, it's going to come up on the other one, all right? So, you know, at the end of the day, you just made a bigger pack. That's it. So, yeah, make sure the voltages are the same. Now, they don't have to be exactly the same, although they should be as close as possible. Uh, say one is at 84.4 and the other one is at 84.2. You know, that's okay. Yeah, that higher one is still going to charge the lower one, but it had a small amount of current. But you definitely can't have them way off. So, make sure those voltages are 
close to the same. All right, I've been rambling long enough. Y'all take it easy. Take care. We out. Peace.